someone has asked a question about how we can find more or have more clarity regarding the situation of the other person, etc. And the answer is that when we communicate for healing purposes, then we are communicating at a level of soul. A level of soul means that we see each other but also we are connected fully and we are cognizant of the connection. So instead of seeing each other as a conflicting as a conflicting other person we think of it like I'm going to miss all We think of it that the whole of humanity is one tree. And even though I'm a different leaf and you are a different leaf, at the level of root, we are the same. So real healing takes place at that time because that is the level when there is no conflict, no envy, no jealousy at the level of because you are one and I'm one and I'm helping myself. So there is no agenda. Oh, is it the internet is going on and off? If the internet is going on and off, then I'll have to use the phone. Is anyone else also having? Oh, because I haven't connected it. Well. Now let me know how the connection is. Should be better now. So to heal anyone, you focus into the center of forehead. Imagine any symbol of God, and we can initiate you right now with the cross. Om is the mystical uh, symbol of Hindus, cross of Jesus. And we use the spiral of infinity for universal energy, leading you from an individual to become a, an infinite ray of love light and laughter. That's the third symbol, which is also the symbol of Reiki. The first one, Om goes with Om. Cross goes with the vibration of Amin. And the spiral goes with the vibration of Om Namo Shiva. Which, when we focus on it, and it could be Allah for you if you want. If that's what you want. Because healing is based on what you believe in. Your faith your trust is the key force. And they say, may the force with you, what they mean is that may you have the faith to be able to move the mountains. So, and the force is in you depending upon how much you invest it with your own power. And that power is going to be depending upon your thinking. Your thinking is going to be depending upon what is it that you trust. So most people nowadays can't do much because they don't trust themselves. They don't trust the world. They don't trust the universe and they don't believe in a God. And God, universe, your life, the people in your life, it's all the same. It's one single entity seen as different. Could there even be one simple person? Photographs of you at different points of life, mine certainly do not match up. Before, hair, after, hair, teenager, this, etc. So it could be, you could be looking at photographs of different individuals. But it's the one thing. Just flowing across with a changing body. So similarly, when we are working as healers, all you have to do is for the energy to work, you focus into the center of your forehead. Imagine Om, cross with Amin, or the spiral of infinity with Om Namah Shiva. When we tattoo ourselves with that symbol over out here, 
in our head, our thoughts, which are heavy and judgment-based and good and bad and all those differentiations are there, they have made our head heavy and gray. Now, where the presence of that symbol, these are burning symbols, they are a fire. And the fire doesn't fight with anything. It just removes the darkness by its very presence. When these judgments are gone from our head, our heart opens up. And then from the heart is a flow of energy of love. And this energy we can send to our palms and we can hold it like this as if almost doing a namaste, keeping it like this and visualizing a golden ball or out here and you can keep on practicing. The more you focus over out here, the more your heart opens, the more is the flow of energy. You can take five minutes, you can take 10 minutes, you can take hours, depending upon what level of professionalism you want to get into or what level of achievement you want to get into. And the less you have judgments, the faster this happens. So you have this energy. Now, when we are working with another person, we have to be, we take permission. We never go into the field. There are, I know, there are thousands of, in Vegas, etc. I've seen it's really a good, it's a good business model. You open a kiosk and then you start selling enlightenment for $20 and uh, how, for 20 minutes or something like that. And you can have chakra balancing. I have seen in this heart of Vegas and uh, Los Angeles, I saw kiosks with chakra balancing being sold off for $200 or whatever. And you can easily do it. Just focusing over, over out here, opening your heart. And the difficult part is in getting the person to trust you with their healing. It is not focusing over out here that you can with practice and then feeling the vibration of any Ameen, Om, you breathe in Ameen, no, from your heart flowing out. Om, Namo Shiva, Om, breathe in Namo, your heart, Shiva flowing out. You can do it with any mantra, mantra is basically a prayer. A prayer is a call out to the universe, I need help. So when we call out to the universe, I need help, the universe always will react and will give us the best possible support that is needed for our spiritual growth, not for our personality. Personality is just, we are, Communicating, communicating right now, even at a le level of soul to soul. So what I look like, what I wear, etc., will slowly disappear. And you see just that all the communication is flowing through me as a golden light to a golden light inside you. And the huge illusion of the world is that we seem to be separated. You are here, I am there, etc. But I was explaining that we are all like the leaves of a tree. We see ourselves, oh, I'm different, you're different. But when we get down to the very core, at the deepest part of our heart, we are the roots of the tree that connects all and everything. And that tree root, at that level when we work as a healer, then what is happening? The left hand is not seeing that the right hand is a client and I have to make $20 out of it in the next 20 minutes or I have to heal or something. The left hand is seeing that I'm going to be clapping so that there is harmony and I'm going to be helping. And the help that you do is by praying. And when we pray, a praying is a call out to the universe, oh Lord, oh God, in whichever form, in whichever culture, in whichever language, in whichever way. It's a shout, I'm small and you are really awesome. Because the awesome part of what that we think is, is belongs to the personality. When we cry out for help, it makes that ego that, oh, I am this huge and very important part of the universe that goes down. And because that I is dealing with your body, mind and intellect. So we communicate as healers at a level of soul and we ask the other person because the other person is the same sun getting reflected in a different pond or maybe a different part of the same pond. And we, can I be your healer? And then if the other person trusts you with that, because trusting, getting the consensus from the other person 
that yes, I accept you as a healer. That's the tricky part. Working as a healer or working as an energy healer or and this and that is uh, even be being enlightened, not so difficult. What you do with it, that's a different story. So at a level of very, very root, that golden light, which is deep inside each part of that root of the tree, which connects the whole of the humanity. At the root of the heart, it's the same for everyone. But when the soul detaches itself from the sun, comes, becomes a ray, lands on this planet to have different adventures, different lessons, etc. It works through a body. Some people are not able to log on for some reason. I'll just give an invite once more. So at a level of the sun and the ray, the ray has caught exactly the same qualities of the sun, it's golden light. But when it dissolves back to the sun, it loses its sense of I, me, mine, and then it becomes the sun. So when we're working as healers, When we are working as healers, we are working at the level of the root. And that is the key. And then you cannot charge because the level of interaction is based on your self-realization. If the other person would it not allow you to play the role of their healer, you won't be able to enjoy this magnificent dance of healing and healer and healed. You won't be able to do that. If the other person says, I don't accept you as my healer, no matter what energy or how much proficient we are in praying for them, it, it just won't work out. So when we are working as healers, we are invoking with a prayer the deepest part of our heart energy. To be a healer in our times is very easy. It is not as challenging as it used to be even five, 10 years ago. People were paying 2,000 to 20,000. I know of a person who paid 48,000 for courses less, less than this. And the theory was that you invest in something and then you come back and you tell to everyone, oh, now, now I know a new symbol to work with. And people would pay you to learn the new symbol and you would recover that. And also in the process, you will get a, a huge ego, 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 I would say ego, play or ego role playing as a teacher because now you're teaching and you're telling everyone yes and this the newest symbol is like a triangle and it's uh, actually like the Jewish uh, star of uh, Solomon and uh, but others are you're going you may be calling it something else which is, this is the new star symbol and people will be and of course it will work all symbols when you trust them they work so when we are working as healers to get the clarity regarding the other person, the basic technique is never going to be changing. And it's not really a technique also. It's your intent. So the first lesson was that we go with the intent that I want to be self-realized by helping you. Or rather play at helping you. And you pray. And when we pray, since we are reaching out to the universe and acknowledging Prayers that are at the end of the day only going to be, I am small, you are great. No matter what the wording, no matter how it works out, it's going to be you acknowledge, you hold your head down, you know, you never pray, I this and our father which art in heaven. You say, I father which art, or you do namaste like this. You don't, you're not really proud. You don't go to the, uh, there is a story that 
when St. Peter reached the pearly gates, they wouldn't open for him because he said, I am here. And they said, no, nothing doing. Till he didn't understand that the way that he's pronouncing his I is very, very full of uh, not only confidence, which we are taught is the good thing, but it's full of like lack of humility. And only when he said, oh Lord, and then the doors open. So it's when we pray, we are acknowledging our smallness of our body, mind, and intellect. When the ray of from the sun, it breaks off, it has the same qualities. But if it starts to judge itself, oh, the ray, the sun is so big, I'm so small, forgetting that the same golden qualities are there in the sun as well as in the ray. They share the same qualities. And size and numbers is just a mind game. So we break off, we land up in our body. The body has got a name, is given a name by the parents, has got a history. And all those factors, the name, our relationship with the different people with whom the body is surrounded. We call that our life and our way of thinking based on our experiences and our judgments becomes our intellect. And our intellect is the judgment machine over out here. And that keeps on creating good memories, bad memories, bad memories, good memories. And at some time, if, we are, if life is giving us a lot of comfort that everyone is aiming for, then we feel, oh my God, I'm doing good. I'm so great. I did this and it clicked and I got the money. So I'm really, like, really smart. And we don't acknowledge, oh, that the universe was working in a way when everything is coming up and down. I was just lucky and I got the money good. So many people are always planning to get money. Not everyone does. So a prayer diminishes. And finally, if we pray enough, if we pray enough, adequate number of times, we pray enough, our ego, our sense of I keeps on going down, dissolves becomes very small and then magic can happen. Because then your own, you're working, but you're working as an instrument of the universe, which we are going to be calling Brahma. Brahma is the universe. It is exactly like the Tao that is described by Lao Tse and there was a lot of interaction between Chinese and the Indian concept. So, the Indian concept was that we do not call God any name at all. Or we call it these conditional names, but they are all symbols pointing to the moon. They are not the moon itself. They are just conditional signals, symbols. But they do invoke those powers in us when we pray to them. Because pray, praying means I'm small, you're big. And when we reach out to the universe, it gives us the exact response because it is very interactive even now as i'm sitting the whole universe is moving five minutes ago the universe was in a different place time was different time is very like five seconds have passed or five million years have passed we cannot go back so it's past past just don't rationalize it and make it like quantified etc just think right now in terms of the holistic manner which will set you free so since everything is changing we also have the opportunity right now to be reborn with little egos. Ego at the end of the day is a mechanism that helps me identify with the body and navigate in this world. And when I use this navigation tool for the betterment and service of others, then immediately I start to get superpowers. If I'm aiming for the superpowers, they won't be happening because it's like the Heisenberg principle. The more you, I'm going to be praying for this superpower. I want to be praying to become a really great healer, a great healer. I want to pay respect and all that. Then it does not work out like that because the more you want to be great, means there is something wrong with your, with your understanding of your own life, with, the, with your own understanding of who you truly are. So it keeps on shifting up. But when you are just humble and I want to serve, and your service is not for $20 or $200 or not even in terms of you serve, but you don't really even care for reputation and this and that, you just serve. 
with the joy of service. So that is the payment itself. Then different types of magic will happen. You can close your eyes and when you're working unconditionally and you're not reaching out to be for the superpower, then you can, in different ways, these superpowers will be unlocked in you because you are born with them. But your insecurities, I want these, made them move away. A lot of times you can hold up children and they will be able to prove to you that they see aura and all that stuff. It's stuff that for which people are willing to pay $2,000 to $10,000 on the internet to various ladies. I've seen a lot of like middle-aged ladies and holding like uh, holding on Zoom, aura teaching and this teaching and people are paying. And, and it's they do not really know that all these arts are known as Siddhis. They are from the scriptures, from all the scriptures. And when there was a cold war, etc., there was an attempt to make these psychic powers a part of the agenda and fighting tools. And they just removed the word, uh, they just removed the word uh, prayers and God, and they just made it very, very sanitized, desanitized without the word of God. And they made it very cold exercises. And the point is that it can be done, but people go mad. I know there is an, you might be surprised, there is an institute in Moscow that holds the world record for teaching people how to do what is called kinetology or something like that. What they do is they train you for a whole year and they have a graduation ritual when you sit and there is a tennis ball or somewhere in a pyramid and you can look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it and you can make it. And I met some of these people who had done this course and they were very happy. Yes, after a year, we could make that ball move and all that. And I said, okay, and why don't you do it? They say, after doing that, it gives them a huge amount of headache. And I was laughing. You spent so much amount of useless time in this institute, which is uh, reported in the book of uh, Limca book of records and all that. Well, you could just flick that. Uh, why did you waste so much amount of time in that? They thought that it's going to give them the superpower of becoming like uh, they show in the movies and all that you are over out here and you move, move mountains and this, etc. Those are symbolical things. But the fact is that if you take out the word of God and all that, you can get, you can get those superpowers. And even if you were to spend all your life and you know, what use would you? You can, it's be easier to go into and for any job, make twenty dollars and uh, and take a uh, and rent a bulldozer or something and move whatever you want to do. You have to be very pragmatic because you are focusing with energy on doing things that are have got no value. So superpowers, etc., are things that do happen and will happen with you. And the key is that you pray because praying makes your ego that's lock that prison of your way of thinking that makes you see yourself just as a small biological person with this much amount of time, with COVID around the corner, with so many diseases and this and with lust and sex thoughts, and so, which is common. Don't make a big deal of it. If you have it, good. If you don't have it, not a big deal. Or with all those things. So you identify so much with those body things that you start to think that you are that body. It's like when we landed, we were given a Ferrari, a really good Ferrari that's aging and that's very malleable and self-healing and all that. And we started to identify so much with our transport system. I live in Toronto. If I started to, if they tomorrow, oh, the Toronto trans, uh, transport company, the, is system is going to be down, etc. And I said, oh, my health is suffering. That's my fault. That's not the gods or universes. So we start mixing up our system of transportation on this planet, which we are enabled with so that we can serve others. And a lot of people land up on this planet and then they start living for their, uh, their systems of transport. I'm going to get the best possible oil for it. I'm going to make sure that my garage has got 10 bedrooms in it. I'm going to make sure whatever a house I met some people recently who had, a, who had some amount of money and they had bought a new house out of depression and fear of COVID. And I didn't tell them that. I could not tell them that, hey, this house that you have bought, you're not going to be, we are in 60s, you're not going to be probably living in it for a long period of time. 
and you are excited about the mortgage and this and etc but it's just a toy and after some time when you're over 50s and 60s or buying a house it's like you're in subconsciously or directly you're preparing yourself for your coffin a house is a coffin just expanded walls and that's all and at the end of the day no matter how huge a house or how many houses you have you lie down in a very small part of the bed so we play with these things we start living for the car that we have and we start ensuring that my car will be parked near someone else's car and it will be good and you start to think that's happiness etc and okay okay that's all is okay but at a root level when we pray we identify we reach out to the sun the moment we reach out to the sun we get connected to the sun and our ego our bodies our identification with this car which is the body our way of thinking which is our which is our intellect and this constant stream of thoughts which is the mind goes down and then the super powers that are there in god gets start getting activated inside us so to heal you pray you close your eyes focus into any symbol of god cross and i'm doing it consciously so that everyone who is in the class today everyone who is in the class today is able to focus into the center of the forehead and as a group we are one right now draw the symbol of cross so the first lesson was about our intent that when we start to be come healers we have the intent i want to be self realized by helping you because helping you is helping myself when you allow me when you allow me to work with you when you allow me to play the role of your healer at that time the healing starts and it's all a dance of prayer energy so you focus over out here in the center of the forehead and tattoo yourself with the symbol of cross enabling you to get the super powers of christ which is the power to forgive everyone and carry your cross and you feel the vibration of army 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 and then you focus on the symbol of om it is the mystical symbol with more than a thousand meanings and the meaning for our purpose is o ma salen so you feel om you tattoo your soul you become identified with the warriors of healing peace and love and you feel o ma and then total silence i want you to feel the silence also each one of you Oh Oh I'm in the center of the forehead Boris Catherine G Diana Dipendra I'm going to be naming so that you do your healing right now initiation Doris Oh E Oh Galia Oh hal o lora o j o j o jorg o k h o l i l a o l u b a o l i n o marina o meredith o morgan o nilam o noel o priti o rita o shahla o shahla o stephen lo Om Stu Om Sata Om Zarina Om Irina Om Rodalin Om Let it vibrate. Om. So you are blessing yourself with the powers of healing. As the Om forms and vibrates in your forehead, it kills your ego. your style of thinking your mind with all the 
train of thoughts. It's just everything is just focused on your own and your intent to be a healer, a warrior of spreading love. Oh. 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 As your Om is, may I be awakened to my true, true powers, oh, to my divine powers. Oh. The divine power is to have a laughing, smiling heart that spreads love, light and laughter. Oh. The third symbol that we are initiating you, after you get the intention, you express the intention to yourself, may I be a servant of the God, spread in spreading love, light and laughter. Focusing on the three symbols or any symbol that you want with the vibration of Amin with cross, Om with Om. And the third is the spiral of infinity. The point where it starts is the center of your forehead, is the center of your individuality. Oh, I am this body. My name is this. I have this face. I have this body and relations and so many things have happened and so many things have not happened. All those judgment calls, they are at that point. And then it opens so that you become freed from that point of individuality. You become free and you become infinite love, light and laughter so that so you become a pure wave of energy. Energy has no start and no end. Om Namo Shivaya. Om Namo Shivaya. So you tattoo yourself with the Om Namo Shivaya and again feel the vibration. Boris, Om Namo Shivaya. Catherine, Om Namo Shivaya. Chi, Om Namo Shivaya. Diana, Om Namo Shivaya. Dipendra, Om Namo Shivaya. Doris, Om Namo Shivaya. Elin, Om Namo Shivaya. Galia, Om Namo Shivaya. Hal, Om Namo Shivaya. Sweta, Om Namo Shivaya. Ora Om Namo Shivaya, J Om Namo Shivaya, Jean Om Namo Shivaya, Jorge Om Namo Shivaya, KH Om Namo Shivaya, Lila Om Namo Shivaya, Luba Om Namo Shivaya, Lynn Om Namo Shivaya, Marina Om Namo Shivaya, Meredith Om Namo Shivaya, Morgan Om Namo Shivaya, Neelam Om Namo Shivaya, Noel Om Namo Shivaya, Preeti Om Namo Shivaya, Rita Om Namo Shivaya, Sala Om Namo Shivaya, Shala Om Namo Shivaya, Stephen Om Namo Shivaya, Su Om Namo Shivaya. Sweta Om Namo Shivaya, Zarina Om Namo Shivaya, Irina Om Namo Shivaya, Rosa Om Namo Shivaya. So you tattoo yourself, but the group is in a synchronicity, so you feel it. And now I'm going to be doing it with everyone. You see it like a drill. The swirling energy, it's like a drill going deep inside your head. Om Namo Shivaya, Om Namo Shivaya going to your center of your skull where the pineal gland of enlightenment, the enlightenment gland is activated with Shiva. Shiva, Om Namo Shiva means I see the Lord, I see God, I see the infinity of love in myself, I see infinity of love in everything and everyone. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Let it drill down. As the energy reaches your pineal gland, it, the pineal gland explodes when the word Shiva is there. And as the explosion is inside your head, all your egoistical judgments, which make you feel small and which was holding you back, are killed, eradicated. And your angel wings of faith, your angel wings of faith, And your love open, your superpowers start to unlock. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Deeper the drill goes, it has to reach the pineal gland. Om Namo Shiva. Let there be an explosion in the center of your skull. Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. As your pineal gland is activated, 
there is no more any constricting restricting thought in your head except that you want to serve then your heart becomes a golden fountain and that energy from the golden heart is flowing to your palms is flowing to the people in your life so you are going to be sending with om namo shivaya you are going to be om your heart explodes namo you spread out love from your heart shivaya you send it to specifically to people at home you have an incident that you had judgments at boris said anything relating to health katya at anything relating to professional life and all the up downs for the last two and a half year g for spiritual development and worries about your children deep depend about one and a half years ago relationship issues you send love to them doris for the last three and a half years oh, health issues elin elvin addictions and all that galia for the last 16 months health issues on the chest hal also in the lower half of the body and uh, conflicts with in the family om namo shivaya om namo shivaya oh lora for the last two and a half months relationship issues j insecurity about job and a conflict in a relationship which happened 3 years and 6 3 years and 5 months ago gene your spiritual development for everything that makes that every thought that makes you small or gives you a concern do om namo shivaya om namo shivaya imagine your heart is breathing out uh, the heart is breathing out and sending huge waves of good and love to whatever has happened for four and a half years ago and uprootment and changes in your life that you are still not comfortable with kh six and a six years ago a uh, change in circumstances very drastic change in circumstances six years ago and you have, so whatever the changes were you you see them as blessing and you send love from your heart Lilia, for the last six four months, ups and down in relationship. Every the whole world is floating. Luba, your health issues. Om Namo Shiva. Lin, for the last four and four years and two months, relationship and insecurities. Four years and two months. So whatever happened, then send love to it right now. Marina, whatever happened three weeks ago. Om Namo Shiva. Two and a half rather. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Mary, that whatever happened three years ago, two years and ten months ago, Morgan, take out all your self-judgment from whatever happened two years and two months ago. Neelam, health issues and insecurities, especially ranging from the last four and a half years. Noel, for the last thirteen months, specifically thirteen months ago, some huge conflict. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Pretty around now for two and a half months again, the same thing is coming up and again. Just keep on saying. Om Namo Shiva. Rita, whatever whatever you are going through right now for the last four and a half months. Om Namo Shiva. Rose, whatever is has been happening for in your life for the last four years and five months. Om Namo Shiva. Shahla, all the health issues in the last six seven years. Om Namo Shiva. Shahla, a lot of insecurities for the last two years and two months. Stephen, a thirst for knowledge which is you cannot find an answer to right now. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo. Sending thoughts of love to whatever was the thought in your head that was making you feel, oh, I don't have enough. You resolve, and your own universe is full of golden light from your heart by sending love to anything or anyone that had caused any conflict in your head. now when your whole universe is full of golden light now you are a healer and you can start to send love as blessings to everything and everyone oh breathe in so that you give now the intent is i am my whole universe is full of golden light oh lord and this light is you not me and i offer this light to everything and everyone on the planet om namo shiva breathe in om namo shiva om namo shiva om namo shiva om namo shiva god so there are millions of techniques and thousands of books and 
billions, billions now probably of yoga teachers and, and all of them are right when you trust in them. But the end story is that your heart has got to be a golden fountain of pure joy, spreading love, light and laughter, starting with the people at home you had any conflicts and judgments at. And that's how you discovered your balance and your innate, inherent, your born ability, your birthright to be a healer. So first you fill, fill your own universe because most of the healers have our own issues or this and that, I lost my job, I lost my this, our relationships could be better, this could be better, that. And those judgments stop you from becoming a healer because you yourself need healing. But when your heart is open and you're sending love to whatever we had had hurt us in, our, in terms of our body, mind and intellect, that's our personality. When we send love to those people who had in any way been able to hurt us and thus become our teachers. And we pay respect to our teachers because if we had landed on this planet, the biggest myth right now is that if only I had a comfortable life, then I would be happy. You would be miserable. The king of Norway sometime back had all the comforts. He was 48, he committed suicide. And the, there are places on the planet where pe more people are right now during COVID are dying from drugs because of the feeling of isolation and desperation than from COVID. But the government cannot do so much about the drugs more than that's already doing. So the whole focus becomes COVID, COVID, COVID. But there are, when the really rich people, they take drugs because they are the people who can afford it more. Not always, but they have the temptation and they have the means. So it works, it works out more in there that they get tempted more. And all drugs are mini suicides. So we are also praying for Shala's uh, financial issues and everyone is having financial issues. But as the real issue that we have is that we always have enough in North America, but we always feel that we don't have enough. And even if we were to lose, so what? But we will we'll send strength to her so that she can manage and find a way out of her financial issues. Om Namo Shivaya. Om Namo Shivaya. Om Namo Shivaya. Now behind me, I have today since we are talking about superpowers, and this was someone else who had asked for it, but the topic was also superpowers. So behind me, I have the photo, I have the icon of Saint Joseph of Cupertino. And he was the, his life story is one of the most funniest and the tragic also. When he was born, his family was really poor. His father, his father was a carpenter. He got into debt. And his family home had to be like, had to be sold. So his mother actually gave to, gave to him rise in a stable while hiding from the creditors and his father had when he was small. So he had a very poor uh, upbringing and that plus the fact, so he was already traumatized as a, as a young child and then he had learning disability. And who amongst us does not have a, we are not Einstein's. Om doing Om, etc. doesn't take a lot of this. And if we were really very intelligent, etc., then the thing is that uh, most of the time, intelligence is counted nowadays and in the ability to make money. So if you are really making um, money, then you wouldn't be going in for healing and these things. These things are meant for people who want spiritual richness. And whether it is forced on us, or whether we have to go for it, or whether it is a choiceless choice, it doesn't matter. But spirituality is the one answer to material abundance. Because no matter what we have, even if we just have a shirt, we are going to be feeling, oh my God, I have so much, I've got a shirt. And the people who have spent all their lives, and that's really tragic, they spend all their lives looking after their cars, which is their bodies, and taking care of their bodies, and, this, and getting 
all sorts of sensations. The, the five sensations, they take care of food and smelling good and this and going to different places and lying down in the flying for eight hours, then lying down on the sun and coming back, etc. And nothing. It's just senses. So the spiritual people are the people we don't really have to go anywhere. Or even if we go anywhere, it's a pilgrimage. Because the Lord is everywhere. God is everywhere. The one that we are seeking is everywhere and we start seeing him everywhere. But we may or may not go. We can take a pilgrimage inside our heart also. So with these powers, and the power is very simple. We did that. Amin, Om, Om Namo Shaya, center of the forehead, opening a heart, sending love to whatever has hurt you in the past. And then there's a golden aura. Your heart is like a, your heart is a fountain of golden love and you are able to provide service. Now we can touch base with anyone on the planet and say, I want to be your healer. Would you accept me? And if that person says, yes, you can pray with any vibration, just breathe in Om Namo Shiva. Just keep on sending to that person. And it's a prayer. Om Namo Shiva means I see God in myself. I see God in you. Shiva is the God. God is one, but reflected in everything. And Shiva is the conditional God of that takes us towards infinity of understanding and meditation, clarity and meditation. And he himself doesn't have like all the gods the Greeks and all the gods are very show their abundance, gold and powerful, etc. Shiva is the only god who is covered in nothing. He's just ashes, simplest, and he surrounds himself with death and he's blue because he self-sacrificed. Uh, he was ready to self-sacrifice himself. There was a uh, there was a battle between the demons. There was always a battle between the demons and the gods, and they agreed at one time that we are not winning neither you nor us, so we will drag out, dredge out from the deepest part of the ocean all the nectar of immortality and whoever gets it will win. And during that time, of course, it's a, it's a symbolical psychological story rather. When from the subconscious, the immortal nectar of spirituality is coming up, also comes the individuality of your poison. And the poison was so deadly that only no one could accept it. And had it spilt on the earth, it would have been destroyed just like a nuclear react, nuclear bomb. So only Shiva took it and became blue. So he's blue. So self-sacrificing. And he's surrounded by death. And he's not afraid of it. And he doesn't covet anything. And he is the only God who, when the gods, start, oh, he's so much deep into meditation. What will happen with the universe? Because he is the part of the cycle of destruction and construction, without which construction cannot, nothing can be created if the old is not destroyed. And she, they sent out the Cupid and to disturb his meditation and Shiva opened the third eye of knowledge and the Cupid got burned. And then his wife and etc. they had to know, no, we, we need some sort of love. We do need sex. Otherwise, why do we come to this planet, etc. So then Shiva was pacified, but he is the only one towards whom when we are moving, towards whom, towards Shiva when we are moving, then we can conquer even lust. And that's that's really high. Now, St. Joseph of Cupertino, when he was... Yes. Yeah, when he was a child, because of the, all the traumas, he was he would go into visions, etc. And he had a learning disability. So he didn't do well, just like me in the class and all that. We can all identify with him. He did not do well in the class. He was, all his life, he was considered a dullard and he was not a peaceful guy. He had a very terrible temper. So, and this is, our, he was born in around 16, 1606 in Italy, in a small place near, in Cupid. And twice when he was 17, 18, he was not able to do anything, fit anywhere. Absolutely not able to fit anywhere, just like me. And I suspect some of us not able to fit anywhere. If you are able to fit in this world and you are making money, etc., and you are successful, means maybe you are using your intelligence for the wrong thing. Maybe if you have become money-minded and you're making money, I see all the time, people who are thinking a lot about money, you have to work from the head. The head will lead you to ways to manipulate the situation and come up with strategies so that you make more money. 
but it also creates simultaneously enhances your ego so that you start thinking money is more important and then you start thinking oh that person has more money so he is probably better and worse and then the and you have start having disregard for the people who have less money and all that so gandhi jesus all these people didn't have a lot of money just so that so the people who get this the head works over time and for various different reasons because their prioritization is money which requires the head to be working the heart keeps on getting closed and the heart of a healer is a place of spontaneous joy like every one of the group right now but when a heart has been closed due to oh this shouldn't have happened and why did this happen with me and we never question why not and my wife left me and job went away and this and i can't find a partner and i'm getting up to the age and this and this and i'm feeling lonely and all these things and we start to pity and ourselves and our health we start getting more concerned with our physical health we start going buy more i was in the whole foods i swear i saw someone buy for 800 dollars at one go and and the lady even john when she was making um, you know that sort of you know i was like wow and i was buying something like eggs or, or, or something like that less than 10 dollars or something but that's the way it is people really think that food is the food will save them and good food will save them it doesn't save anyone everyone is going to but when you stop caring so much about your body and you just focus on the, not on the money not on the head but on having your heart open by sending love to whatever then it becomes a habit then this golden joy is always with you and you will always feel like a millionaire or a billion no matter whether you have it or so saint joseph copetino he was totally a dullard with a very terrible anger issues he could go off into become very and he was not accepted anywhere and he would be he was he is now the pattern saint of people who like knew who, who have a tough time taking the exam because there was only one topic he knew and when he went to take take the exam the teacher asked that one question which he knew so he passed the school so that's why he this is also considered one of his miracles incidentally one of them so he was he said still he was and he wasn't very like graceful or something like he was exactly like no grace no nothing 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 working out for him but uh, he was very simple and the poor people liked him so the the and he wanted to get into the convent where the where the priests were so they tried him out and they are then after two years he was breaking all the plates because he would go into a stupor and just like someone would mention something about god and he would get fixed break everything and this happened so many they tried to punish him they kicked him out of the convent they kicked him out of the church then uh, he went to another place then he worked for again for two years and they finally saw that he's very humble and he's a good he was a good person but he was just not fitting in anywhere so finally after being accepted the second time he did become a priest and he didn't he didn't communicate well he had zero charisma that's what i'm saying like he was very much like when i read about him and felt about him oh my god i must have been like i must be reincarnated we minus the everything good and then there was one thing about him he started to pray and when he would pray he would forget who he is so at that times he started to fly and this is a historical fact now 16th the 17th century is not so much is the age of renaissance in italy so people are not oh okay we don't believe it they checked it out and any time that he would start to meditate or pray really badly he just would start to fly so he had to they had to put him in a small altar where he would not be able to fly and sometimes it was worth it he he helped the cross be struck put in the church uh, in the altar and, and he held the workmen and sometimes he just it was just uncontrollable he would start to pray and that at some point he would just people would see that he's levitating so he became the levitation friar and people would write about him and people would come and see him and including one of the like people were not really so much convinced about catholicism at that time 
some of them Italy was still going through. It wasn't that everyone, there were different uh, Protestantism, etc. So one of the dukes, when he saw him, became converted fully. And he wrote and he gave a lot of money to the church. So that helped him. But the church in those times, in the 16th century, in the 17th century rather, was afraid because flying was means that you might be doing witchcraft. So there is a story that he was even, they tried exorcism on because they didn't trust. So the church instead, oh, we have a flying friar and his life would become easy. He was put in a very strict condition. You can know he couldn't talk with anyone for the last, for 10, 20 years. After he started to fly, they closed all avenues. But people had heard about him and it, his, which, which, uh, which convent he was would be kept a secret. But people still would find about him and try to visit him. So the church was always trying to close it and disregard it. And it did not make his life easy at all. And he was very simple. It wasn't that he was like communication smart or anything. But all he had is the superpower that I want all of us to have. Pure faith and simplicity. So when you close your eyes, I want you to forget your name and your body so much. And then you can fly or whatever your superpower inherent is. Whatever the superpower that you have is will arise when you will murder your personality. So you have to slowly learn first to laugh at yourself. Most people take, take themselves and their point of view and their body. And so that's why they're able to send, spend $800 on Whole Foods. And their thoughts very seriously. I said this. So what? So what? I lost or I gained or anything that happened in your life. Now anything that happened even five seconds ago has no value. The same no value as anything that happened five million years ago. And the earth is rotating at a huge speed. So everything is changing and all the atoms and all the molecules and all the cars on the street and everyone around us is moving, 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 moving. Every movement means that everything is changing. But two things do not change. For something to move, there has to be a point of reference. If two trains are moving at the same speed, you will feel, oh, the other car is not moving or my car is not moving. So everything moves in reference to something. So you have got to the primal non-moving part in the deepest part of your heart. And the other thing that doesn't really change is your way of taking yourself seriously. So you are, you have to be able to, someone is asking for Let me see if that helps. I hope that helps. If not, I hope on the YouTube it, it would come out clearer. Your first superpower has got to be for everyone, which is common, is when your heart is open, then the heart is smiling. And your first superpower is the power to make the people in your life, in any which that you can, serve them. Most of us are surrounded by people who are very serious and everyone has got a challenge in some person that we are connected to and the other person doesn't see ourselves as we would like to be seen. So our first superpower is a smiling heart. No matter how the people, no matter how life, no matter what the universe gives us or does not give us, our heart has got to be smiling. It doesn't mean that we go to a funeral and start laughing. No, we have full sympathy, full empathy. But we do not have the fear of death. Because that golden hearted smiler, which is non-changing, Is the true you at a level of the tree where everything is conjoined, there is no conflict. 
and all the conflicts are based on money and respect and sex or lack of it, whatever it is. Resolve it in an amicable way with full respect for the divine, unchanging, eternal soul power in you as well as in the others. And know that what is stopping you from getting your superpower is your seriousness of taking yourself, your life, your thoughts. I have this thought and I have this life and these are my relationships. Everything that you can attach my, I, me, mind to. Don't take them seriously. Like have them, enjoy them, but don't make a big deal of it. But most of the world is right now going through a crisis. Have empathy, sympathy for them as much as you can. Pray for them endlessly instead of praying for, I want this superpower, now give me this superpower. I want this Om Namah Shiva, I want this superpower. Even that works, even that works. But it will come up with a side effect. So in our scriptures, you may be or may not be surprised, but there the scriptures are just like full of the Greek stories, gods and demons fighting. And gods and demons are always praying and invoking the gods to be on their sides. So there's a story of Mahisasur or Bhasmasur, there was one, who prayed to God uh, Shiva and Shiva is supposed to be the, of all the god forces. Shiva is the most easy, easy going one. Like Vishnu is the master manipulator. So when Vishnu appears as avatar, as being born for the betterment of humanity, he will be doing, he will be manipulating the circumstances and situations, etc. Tendency to rather. And there are stories about him. But Shivnu is the simplest one. So when the demon um, Bhasmasur asked him, I want to be the most powerful and uh, force on the on, in the universe. He said, yes, okay. And he says, so I want the power that on whose ever head I lay down my head, my hand, he should be burned to ashes. And Shiva said, yes. You have prayed to me. I'm happy with you. Take this as a boon. And this demon said, but Shiva is giving out this boon. So I, if I destroy Shiva, then I will become the... I would become the most powerful force. So just after getting this boon, he started to run after Shiva. <laughs> and then Shiva was held by the feminine energy of the universe, finally, which is Kali. So the point is that the demons and the gods are praying to the three primal forces, Brahma, Vishnu, Mahesh, which is another name for Shiva. And this primal force is just is an ever changing and we cannot really discuss. Think of ourselves as we are bacteria in our own stomach. Now as bacteria, can we understand? We can just see the red environment everywhere and we can see how the other bacteria are, are surviving in their life, etc. But can they understand as a bacteria with bacterial way of thinking, can they understand the body? And they can say, I want to see you. And you tell them, Hi, stomach bacteria, how are you doing? I said, I don't know, some, maybe it's in my head and maybe it really is some sort of a communication. But it seems to be from inside me. And you can say to the bacteria, I and you are one. And he said, no, no, I see, I don't see you. And you tell to the bacteria, you can't really understand me and what's happening. And the bacteria, you know, I see that stomach and something, the, the, the bad things are happening in the stomach. Take that. I don't want that. But if, from this universe, take that badness out. You do, you can't really explain that it's needed. And you can even say, like, if you really want to see me, I can. You might have to take into a different out of the body experience. But you might die. So at that time, ninety nine percent of the people will say bacteria will say no. I don't want to die. So I'm going to be living as a bacteria, and I would consider all this communication as something in my voice or something holistic. But when the bacteria closes its eyes and when you close your eyes, you are one. And everything around you is a part of God. Everything that you see or don't see is godliness. You can't really understand God. So bacteria cannot define a God. 
which is your body. The same way we cannot. We try to, but we can feel this force of eternal love flowing through ourselves. And when we become cognizant and aware of it, with this force, we are able to use the symbols to open our heart and send this as a prayer or energy with prayers as a golden light to anyone who is allowing us, okay, I accept you as my healer. And when that person gives you the go-ahead, then there is a flow. And it's very, very intangible and tangible at the same time. Intangible because it's not seen, but you feel it and the other person will definitely. And prayers are something that will have a change for always, always. But we are also locked up with a, in a body with a particular way of thinking and that's our personality. So our mind and intellect is equal to our personality, which keeps all these thoughts in the head. This was good. This is bad. Etc. So that's our intellect. And mind is just flow of, oh, I like this. I don't like this. And all that intellect is basically harsh judgment call. This is good. This is bad. But in different societies, in different life, these things change. So there's nothing objective about it. So you have to diminish the value of ego that we hold. And then whatever is left is godliness. So don't care about so much about your mind, about your intellect, about your way of thinking. There is a part of your intellect which has been hurt. So that's why you are in a spiritual class. Keep up that point. Use that as a stepping ladder. But diminish the other parts which says, oh, this is good, this is bad, etc. Start to see in everything that you judge as being bad. As a grace of God. Because everything is a grace of God. There is no exception to it. So now when at this point we are going to be doing, I'm going to be working with everyone, but everyone is going to be working with everyone. So we are going to be in pairs and your job for the next five minutes is in total send, silent breathing, Om, Namo, opening your heart and Shiva is sending love to the person in your group so that you receive, you get trained in receiving and sending love, receiving and sending. And when you're receiving, you're changing your personality that I'm not going to be thinking in these derogatory for myself terms. I'm going to be willing myself to see the grace of God in everything. And then my superpowers will automatically be invoked. And the other person you, is just sending blessings and you're receiving blessings. And the person who is sending blessings is also changing in terms of personality. Personality is a way of thinking. So each one sending and receiving, you are being reborn in this new year. And you're saying to yourself, from tomorrow, I'm not going to be thinking with harsh judgments on everyone, anything. I'm going to be always blessing anything that has caused me pain in the past, present, and future. Just bless everything that has caused you pain, any amount of discomfort or loss, physical, emotional, whichever, whatever type of loss. Anything that has caused you any type of loss that has made you think small and has made you afraid and given you these fear complexes, you bless it and you then empower yourself and let those fears just go away, just flow away, just flow away. The other person is also helping you and you're also helping yourself. And as you send and receive love, your personalities are going to become much more laughing. The ability is the supreme ability to laugh at your own self, at your own life, at your own mind, at your own intellect, at your own hardened body. This is good, this is bad. Because whatever you are judging at bad is making you more spiritual. So how can that be bad? So you start. So Boris and Catherine are going to be working with you. Chi and Dipendra, Doris and Elvin, Galia and Hal, Jay and Jean. K.H. and Leela, Luba and Lynn, Marina and Meredith, Morgan and Neelam, Noel and Olga, Preeti and Rita, Rose with Shahla, Stephen with Sue, Sweta with Zarina, and Sweta, Zarina and Irina together then, to each other. And I'm going to be working with anyone. And if anyone has got any questions about their life, they can right now just type it in. Focusing into the center of the forehead, burning a tattoo of God, any symbol, cross, amin, 
Om. We are going with Om Namo Shiva as a whole group. The spiral or the Om. And go with Om breathing. Namo, open your heart. Shiva, let the flow of blessings of golden energy from your internal, deepest part of heart to the other people on, your, on the planet and in your group. And you also receive Om Namo Shiva. 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 Gently breathing through the nose. Oh. You are able to feel beneath the flow of this oxygen, this flow of golden energy, very subtle golden energy. Going to your universe, entering through the nostrils. Namo reaching the heart and Shiva, the explosion in your heart of golden light. Spend, spreading love, light and laughter to all the events in your life and to your partner and unconditional dance of exchange of this love, light and laughter and you start to see yourself from tomorrow reborn without any heavy thoughts free of all heavy judgments with the ability to see the grace of God in everything and everyone unconditional and infinite grace of God in everything and everyone in all the losses, in all the pains, in all the fears, in anything that you considered was bad and traumatic, including in your future death, you send to it blessings and you empower yourself. You arm yourself with your superpowers to laugh and enjoy life no matter what happens on the planet by serving others unconditionally. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva. Om Namo Shiva Om Namo Shiva Om Namo Shiva.
our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On heaven as in earth, on this day give us our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on heaven as in heaven. this day, grace our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us from temptation, deliver us from time, the power, the glory, the kingdom. Watch in us, yes, in the the press life, it's saying it, the privilege of Sasutra, the spool, it's a wound, the Neva image. My name clips with shit music, trust in the Nasha Delgi, Yakaran Christian, the Nasha Kidina, so this question is about. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sakina, Sarve Shantu Nirama, Sarve Patrani Pashant, Makas Chakti Tepot. Om Bhur Bhusaha, Tatsatu Ritni, Bhargo Deva Sadini, Deo Yona Prachita. Om Tre Makam Yedama, Savandim Pushti Vadanam, Uruvarukna, Vitir Makshim Amrata. Om Shanti 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 Shanti. Om Masto Ma Satme, Tamso Ma Jyotirme, Nityo Ma Amritame. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Good. Thank you. If anyone has any other questions, you can ask.